Hello again, this is BGFH. Welcome back to Illegally Cited, and I am back for another iOS video. It's not really a iOS app or gaming video. It's kind of something a little bit different, but something that's really been on my mind <clears throat> for quite a while, a uh, long time actually, in various iterations. But what I want to talk to you guys about today is accessible textbooks. And I'll kind of get more into why in a bit here, but um, while I'm doing that, I want to show you guys uh, a couple weeks ago now on Twitter, and I just haven't gotten around to making the video until now. A couple weeks ago on Twitter, I saw somebody had tweeted a link to this free book that was that became available on the iBooks store. And it was a science textbook about astronomy that was really, really well done. I mean, they said they kind of went, you know, for this particular book, they went above and beyond, um, you know, like the normal navigation and voiceover support. I mean, so I wanted to check it out. And, you know, I wanted to kind of showcase this book because, you know, it is available for free in the iBook store. I would, if you have voiceover or if you uh you know are working in this field or whatever highly recommend checking it out even if you know science is not really your thing it's but it's a fantastic example of how textbooks can be done right and i'll kind of tell you like i said a little bit more about why this topic and why i'm doing this video after we take a look at this book so let me get my airplay server going here i'm going to use my ipad Okay, and let there be mirroring. So let's uh, get rid of that. Now, uh, we are in iBooks right now, and I'm going to turn voiceover on. VoiceOver on. Landscape. Um, I think, I don't know, when I tried doing my other iOS video recently, the Swing Copters video, uh, this version of Reflector seemed to get a little cranky when I had voiceover on while I um, brought up the initial mirroring here so once you have it up and running it seems to work okay so let's just hope we can get through this here so i have a few different books on here you know trials and stuff you get for free with uh, iBooks and stuff Kathy, i see david woodbridge shift uh Kathy, mastering the market i see shift Kathy, masters of doom david kushner cloudy with a chance of profits okay yeah so i've got a few different books in here um not too much i mean iBooks is not my typical platform because you know, like I said, you can only read them on Apple devices, so um, that's kind of why I go the main, more mainstream Kindle route if I can read them on anything. But that's not the topic of this particular video. So what I want to look at today is a book Reach called for stars. Touch. Look, listen, learn. Touch for the Star, or Reach for the Stars, I'm sorry. So let's go into this Reach for the Stars book. Reach for the Stars. Touch. Look. Reach for the Stars. Touch. iBooks is loading. Reach for the Stars. Touch. Library. Touch. Okay. So uh, we are in the book. What I'm going to go to is in the top of, of the top left of the window. This isn't really a thing on how to use iBooks per se. Um, what I really want to do is I just want to show you how well this uh, how well this book works um, because this it isn't just a regular you know it's a textbook, but it's not just text and a few pictures. Uh, you have text, you have pictures, you have embedded videos, you have audio narration, voiceover support, interactive diagrams and charts and all kinds of crazy stuff. And like I said, and it's really amazing because all of this stuff works well with voiceover. So, you know, to all these people that are like, oh, well, you know, we'd love to do, you know, maybe do some accessibility, but we have to basically strip down the graphical look of whatever we're doing, be it a book or a web page or an app, you don't have to do that because this book actually works very well. So I've brought up the table of contents and I'm just gonna go outline three, four, acknowledgements, five, up six, using this book. Let's see, we are going to H2A, outline. One one period two. But what if I don't know my one period one? Why study the stars? So let's just go into chapter one. We're going to go into 1.1. 1. 1. So now, okay, the way this book works is, uh, and this is a textbook, like I said, the reason I keep 
keep telling you guys that it's a textbook is because, um, you know, iBooks or Kindle books, typically, if they're just recreational reading, leisure reading books, they read fine. Uh, I've never yet had a problem, you know, since accessibility has ad been added to things like iBooks, Nook, and especially uh, Kindle, I haven't had a problem. Um, but I've had, I and many other people have had problems with textbooks, Kindle textbooks specifically. I haven't worked a lot in iBooks as far as textbooks go, but I know Kindle is a real problem. Um, and again, I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of this video. So what we have here is we have on the top, you know, and I like this too because um, it's, you know, this is a an ebook, so it doesn't necessarily have to conform to the layout and the the design of a paper textbook. We don't have to make it look like paper. So immediately you notice that you know each page you've got this kind of nice dark color, um, really bolded, bright text, and even at its regular size, the text is actually pretty big. Um, so no problem reading it here. I mean, this is a book that's really meant for younger readers, but it still illustrates what I'm going to show you is it still illustrates the point as to how, how something like this can be accessible. So using voiceover, I can touch near the top of the screen. Why study the stars? Heading. Why study the stars? It's a heading. So again, if you have your rotor elements enabled, I can jump by, you know, if a page has multiple headings or things like that, I can do that. I can read the body of my text with voiceover if I so choose. Page 10. Without the stars, glossary term. The world we know simply wouldn't exist, and neither. All right, so now I just had to read the first line, but that's actually another really cool example. So speaking of rotor, let me choose my rotor real quick. Edit. Containers. Punctuation. Speech rate. Lines. Words. Okay, words. I want to go to the right because you, you remember hearing there's a term that said glossary in it. Star B eight hundred thirty eight mon double tap to play narrative. Quit it. Stars are the furnace. Star B eight hundred thirty eight monastery. Oh, stars are okay, the furnace. Okay, that's my fault. Stars are the furnace in which almost all the elements were formed. Without the stars, the world we know simply wouldn't exist, and neither would we. Everything come from this e book. Come on. Two, where is four, it? Body two. The okay, you know what? I'm gonna cheat. Without the stars without the without the stars okay now interestingly it didn't say glossary um without the stars glossary term the world we know simply wouldn't exist and neither okay um i apologize characters glossary terms okay so glossary terms is actually okay um i that was my mistake um, I can actually choose glossary terms in my rotor. Stars, glossary term. Okay. Glossary term. Planet, glossary term. So we have another glossary one. Let's term. go back up to stars. Let's flick stars, up. Glossary term. I'll double tap. Star. Now we get a little pop-up overlay here, and I can, um, I can just move my finger around the screen. Star. Okay. Here we go. I found it. A huge ball of gas held together by. Let's do my flick, two finger flick down to read this definition. A huge ball of gas held together by gravity. The central core is extremely hot and produces energy. Some of this energy is released as visible light, which makes the star glow. Stars come in different sizes, colors, and temperatures. Our sun is a yellow star of average temperature and size. Okay, there's our nice little t uh, definition for the word star. So I'm going to tap somewhere outside of there. I'm going to double tap to dismiss. All right, we're back to our regular textbook. Again, I can move my finger around um, when you study the stars, line by line. I can start at the top and do a, a read hush. Uh, I can do that. Um, so I can navigate that. In the lower right-hand corner of this book, or of this page, I have... Star B-838 Monoceratus. Star B-838 Monoceratus. Okay, so that tells you... Okay, let's see what our actions are. Enter full screen. Activate item. Default action. Enter full screen. So activate item in this case, because it's an image, um, it, it will pretty much just open it in full screen. Web 
page loaded. Exit full screen. Now, in addition to being a full screen image, all these pictures also have nice long captions at the bottom. So if I touch somewhere near the bottom here, Star V eight hundred thirty eight Monoceratus from the constellation. Let's do a read all. Star V eight hundred thirty eight Monoceratus from the constellation Monoceratus, located about twenty thousand light years away from Earth. Before cooling to its death, this star grew to an enormous size. Unlike what occurs in an ordinary supernova explosion, this star did not expel its outer layers. Learn more about the life cycles of stars in Chapter Five. And there's our nice, really long descriptive caption to this pretty cool looking image. So just like in any other. Uh, pretty much any other app if you find it over in the upper left star v838 monoceratus exit full screen button. exit full screen button star boom we're back to our web page now for those people who don't necessarily want to read it with voiceover or maybe you have uh you know someone else who just wants to hear the book read in the bottom middle of every page double tap to play narration play double tap to play narration now this game this uh this game uh this textbook also has um, full human narration. So I'm just going to play a little bit of that here for you. Why study the stars? Stars are the furnace in which almost all the elements were formed. Without the stars, the world we know simply wouldn't exist, and neither would we. Everything from this ebook to your body to the planet on which you're reading it owes its existence to stars. When you study the stars, you learn about the foundation so of all matter here. and all knowledge. Okay, we paused it. So really clear, really good narration there. Um, and that's everything I've done now so far is just on this one page. So, I mean, there's just accessibility elements galore. Um, really well done. Introduction. Okay. Uh, page 10. So we, again, in our lower right, we have our lower corners. We have what section we're in. We have uh, our page number. And if I do my three finger flick to the left. Page 11. Section okay, two. page 11. I don't know much about science. Heading, heading. That's okay. This book is full of amazing information, but it's designed for beginners. All you need to start is curiosity. The scientists who discovered the wonders you'll hear about all began exactly where you're beginning. See image in bottom right. Page 12, section 3. What will I learn in this book? Now, you notice that if I did let it just do a read all, it does automatically advance. So if you are a voiceover user, and you don't, you know, you'll go back to the, the images and the diagrams and videos and stuff like that later. Um, you know, you can do that. You can just read straight through the book and then look at all this extra stuff later, um, as I just demonstrated there. But if I, uh, I, if I want to go back 11. to Sessions. page 11, but what if I don't know much about um, and it didn't really tell me, I kind of wish that it at least acknowledged, you know, as it was reading, I'm glad that it moved to the next page, but I kind of wish that it did acknowledge like hey there is something interactive on this uh, on this page just let me know that really quick so that if I wanted to stop and do that I could um, but you know not bad so in the lower right again interactive image of the tarantula nebula showing clouds of interstellar gas and patches of starlight interactive of the tarantula nebula showing clouds of interstellar gas and patches of starlight image all right I'm gonna double so tap that because it's interactive but what if I don't know much about science yeah that's okay that's not right you weren't supposed to be on there Interactive image of the tarantula nebula. Web page loaded. Exit uh, full screen. Okay, Button. so we got this crazy full screen um, diagram of this nebula. And visually, I can see, like, you have all of these different shapes. Um, almost like, you know, one of those telestrators. You know, you've got, like, a bunch of circles and squares and pointing out different areas of the nebula. Hot super bubble. So I'm just going to drag my drag finger. Notes. Headers. Elephant trunks. Use the rotor to access links. I'm just notes. moving my finger Headers. around. Stellar nursery. Use the rotor to access links. No, stellar nursery. Hot, hot super bubble. Stellar nursery. Use the star cluster Hodge 301. Will be stars. Okay. Use the rotor to access links. No. So let's Headers. see what. Let's do this rotor thing. Headers. Come on. Notes. Links. Let's do. Notes. Notes. Okay, so there is no notes on this particular item. Um, but in the lower... Tap items above for more information. Okay. Use the rotor to access links, notes, headers, hide region outlines, button. Use so if I, if I wanted to, I outlines. could hide the outlines. So Use let's say that I familiarize myself... Headers. Hush. Let's say that I familiarize myself with this diagram, and I have, uh, you know, kind of learned where things are, 
and I'm a, still I'm a low vision user, and I don't want those things, you know, the, all those little outlines necessarily overlaying the image. I can turn those off and just still look at this image full screen. Now I don't think. Elephant trunks. Tarantula nebula. Okay, Another so. Elephant trunks. Yep. Use elephant trunks. It still will tell me, even though the outlines aren't there, I can still move my finger around the image, and it will still tell me where things are. So that's an example of like an interactive image. So like, you know, think about this wouldn't have to be just for space. Let's say you were doing biology and you had, um, you know, a diagram of a skeleton or maybe you had a human body or maybe you had like the digestive system or something. And, you know, you could have this sort, same sort of type of diagram where you could move your finger around and, you know, spatially the blind or vision impaired user would much more easily be able to figure out where things are, you know, how spatially how things relate, all that kind of stuff. So it is doable. It is, you know, contrary to what people image of the say, um, image. <laughs> it is doable. So let's go look at a couple of other page pages 10, here. The explosion of supernova so we got another page here. Section three, the explosion of supernova, the explosion of supernova 1987A, image. That's just Slide an image. Page 13. Interactive scatter plot that plots the brightness of the group of stars against their temperature. Image. Okay, so here we got another interactive thing. I'm going to double tap that. Exit full screen. So this is, I don't quite, I've never really quite figured out this whole scatter plot thing. Um, kind of baffles me, um, but I can. Main sequence star, 11,000 degrees Celsius. Two, main sequence star, main sequence star, 20,000 degrees Celsius. What red giant, red giant. 6,700 degrees Celsius. Okay. Times brighter than the X equals 8,000 degrees Celsius. Double tap. For I'm narration. just moving. The X axis. Oh, okay. Let's. X equals 8,000 degrees. Celsius. Double tap for narration. Double tap for narration. Use the rotor to access links, notes. Heads. I thought you what? X equals 8,000 degrees Celsius. Double tap for narration. I thought that would do some sort of narration, but it doesn't seem to really be doing that. So I'm, I'm just going to flat out say that I'm, I don't really pretend to understand how this scatter chart works. I, I did play with this a little bit before, um, and I, like I said, I just don't really Main sequence star. don't Double get this chart really, uh, to be honest with you. But it is there, and there are, you know, using the rotor and all that kind of stuff, there are ex ways Interact of making it accessible. Of Let's... Page 14. Okay, we got another image. Another image. All right, we're moving to chapter two. Eh, I don't want another interactive image. All right, so now here we go. We've got another web page, and usually, from what I've seen, they've kept the images. So I think for consistency, they've kept them to the lower right-hand corner of the page. But this one actually has an embedded video, so let's do it. My name is Jason Calorai. I'm an astronomer here. If I wanted to, I could double tap on that, and I could, you know, get the playback controls in full screen if I wanted. For a really big telescope that we're creating called the James Webb Space Telescope. What I do is I spend about half of my time um, studying astrophysical questions that I find to be really exciting. I try and understand how stars are created and how stars change. So I'm not going to play this whole time. thing, but I can jump to the next page. I want to find. Let's see. I'm. Ah. Okay. How you doing? Section one. Page eighteen. Page nineteen. Section four. What? Would you stop it? Page twenty-one. Section five. I'm trying to find. I know I've seen. Seven. Here's another interactive. Interactive timeline, that interactive the timeline of the depicting the history of the universe. So that's something that people can play around with and interactive with. Even ex uh, it's accessible. Page Section There's eight. a chart, Page like a bar Section chart or something that Page I remember 26. seeing. Page and I'm just, like I said, I'm just flicking through some of these pages. Here we go. So we got another interactive diagram. I'm not going to go into each one of these, but I just want to show you the, the variety of different types of controls and items that are in here. I'm just doing a really quick... Skim, another video, video, picture. Page 30, chapter, section 1. 
What is a star? Oh, this is kind of cool. Is this the one where it has the diagram of... Yeah, here we go. This is cool. Let's go into this one. This one I thought was pretty cool. But there are like, you know, bar graphs and all kinds of things too that are accessible. But this one is kind of neat. Um, so the title of this the is structure of the, sun. the structure of the sun. Um, now I'm going to cheat and use my vision a little bit, but let's say that I was, you know, going through this as a totally blind user. Um, I'm going to put my finger kind of in the about, uh, in about the middle of the screen core. core. So that is, uh, basically we just got this circular, we've got this, uh, you know, circle, this sphere where that is the sun. And in the middle we have the core. core. As I move my finger out, radiative zone. Radiative zone. Convection zone. Convection. Use the rotor to act photosphere. Photosphere. Chromosphere. Corona. Now, if I just let's say I tap on the core again, if I double tap, it temporarily darkens the rest of it, so it kind of shows you, okay, hey, this the part that's lit up. That's how much of this item this is. So, especially for people with low vision and contrast issues, this is a really good way to do an interactive diagram because we have this whole diagram is orange and yellow and all kinds of, you know, different shades that are fairly similar in contrast. And in some cases, it may be hard for some people to, you know, to really be able to see the difference and see where one part leaves off and the other part starts, you know. Maybe the teacher wants you to see that, hey, look at how large, um, look at how large the core of the sun is, or look at how thin this other layer is, you know, just, you know, to make, to kind of illustrate how much of the sun, you know, how much of each layer is actually there. So if I touch on any of these layers, convection zone, convection zone I'll double tap it. Zone. It dims the rest of it, and it's much easier to kind of see that part lit up, so... Like I said, I think that's just a nice touch as far as, um, you know, it's accessible to voiceover. You've got another way to kind of increase contrast for low vision users. Um, and, if I, and if I was using, you know, no assistive technology, if I was just a regular, you know, fully sighted, non-disabled student in the classroom, I could totally do the same thing. And it would still, you know, it still helps those students because they can still draw their, you know, draw more attention to certain things in the diagram themselves. So I think that's really about all I'm going to cover as far as this book goes. Um, I just really, again, I wanted to show you guys how well, I'm going to make that not full screen anymore. Um, I'm, you know, I just wanted to show you guys a really good example. One of the best examples I think I've seen as far as an accessible textbook goes because you know a lot of the textbooks they you get them and they could be the text reads okay but you miss out on the pictures the descriptions of the pictures you miss out on any charts or diagrams or you know illustrations trying to point out a certain concept and in each one of those types of situations this book has pretty much got you covered so you know like I said very well done and I'm glad they made this available for free um, just because it's kind of an interesting topic and it could get more people interested interested in this area but I think even more importantly like I said I think it shows a very good accessible example of a textbook and that a book doesn't have to still look really dull or not be interactive and not take advantage of the benefits that you get <clears throat> for an ebook version of a textbook. So I really wanted to point this book out and uh, let me just pop back to my old uh, section four hush toolbar library. Library. Let's just go back to my library, and we'll wrap up this video here. But before I wrap up this video for completely, what I want to talk a little bit about is the reason this issue has been on my mind for so long. And here's where I kind of call for your guys' help, too. Um, like I said earlier, a lot of the leisure or recreation reading text or re recreation texts that you get or books that you get from 
iBooks or Kindle or Nook or any of these other mainstream sources, they work pretty well. Um, a lot of textbooks, though, they have them. Um, some are in iBooks, but a lot of them are actually in Kindle format, and they right now are only tablet versions. So a lot of times, you in fact do have to have a tablet, like an iPad or an iPad Mini, to take advantage of those. So they don't, because they're laid out for a larger screen, so they can you know more um, intuitively lay out the content of the textbook page. Uh, not really enough screen on most phones, although with the size of the, the screens getting bigger, eh, you know, maybe that will change a little bit in the future. But um, the problem that so many of us are having is, and I've talked to Amazon about this a few different times, and the problem that we have is that Amazon has made their books accessible to voiceover or talk back in Android's case. They've made them accessible. You can use the features, you know, all the navigation. You can read with your screen reader. Um, all that kind of stuff, fine. But publishers themselves are actually blocking text-to-speech. So when you're downloading a mainstream textbook, like I said, for recreational reading, you're probably pretty safe. But if you are thinking about getting a high school or a college textbook, be sure to do a couple of things before actually buying. First, look around the page on Amazon or iBooks or wherever it is. And on Amazon, anyway, there's a part, there's a place on the page that tells you whether text-to-speech has been enabled or disabled. Check that out. And if you can't find that, also look and see on that textbooks page a free sample available. If there is, download that free sample. Do not buy the book outright. Buy the sample. Because this will allow you to at least look at a section of it, open it up in your app, test it with voiceover, and see if it will actually read. Um, that's very important because, you know, these textbooks are not cheap either. So, you know, try it out, make sure the sample works, and if it does, yeah, then you can probably feel pretty safe about downloading the book. So, you know, you want to check, like I said, definitely check and see if you find anything about the text-to-speech being enabled or disabled, and download the sample if available. Um... Like I said, I've contacted Amazon specifically in the past because they're, they're they, you know, they're just the most, um, they're the, I would say, the biggest ebook store, both for textbooks and electronic reading, I think. You know, basically, if it's not available in Kindle format, it's probably not available electronically somewhere. So, again, you know, I really, I've talked to them, and what they've said is, We've enabled our text-to-speech features, you know, we've made it accessible for you, but it's actually the publishers that you have to talk to because they are purposely blocking this text-to-speech. Now, this isn't just a problem in the last couple of years as far as, you know, oh, we're able to read Kindle books on our tablets or our phones now. Um, <clears throat> this has been a problem, at least since I've been playing with it, since like the early 2000s, where... If you remember the old Microsoft Reader, you remember the uh, Kindle for PC thing, you remember some of the Adobe Reader stuff, you could download books in Adobe Reader format. All of those things. I remember uh, many years ago, trying to, I went to go download a book I really wanted to read. I'm like, hey, it's in, in, it's, it, it's in electronic format. And, you know, we didn't know any better back then. And um, we, so we downloaded these books or I download, bought and downloaded the book only to realize that, oh yeah, okay, I can get into the, I can get into the book, I can select it, I can open it. First thing that happens when I open the book was it would say, text-to-speech has been disabled for this book. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So the apps back then even had, yeah, it was kind of crappy speech back then, but it had text-to-speech. And so if I was really wanting to, wanting to read that book, I still could, except the publishers blocked the damn text-to-speech from working. 
And ever since then, that has just been a constant struggle we've had to fight against. And in any kind of mainstream book format, it's, it's opened up for the recreational reader, but it really, publishers are still seeming to fight it a lot for the textbook market. And it really baffles me because I'm just tapping the screen every once in a while to make sure that my device doesn't go to sleep. Um, but what really, what really bothers me about this whole thing, and this is where I really need you guys to join us or join me in trying to contact these publishers, because their argument back in the day, because I emailed them several years ago even as well, and there are a couple arguments that they had back in the day, which I think are completely ridiculous, are they said, well, this is a, you know, if we enable the audio we could, you know, that could be a public, A, it could be a public performance, so we could, you know, you could have it start reading the book, and then one person buys it, but then you have five people come over, and then those other four people aren't reading the book, so they're having it read to them. Um, and then their argument was, oh, well, but you could, then you could, you know, have the book play back the audio of it reading, and then you could record that, and then you could, you know, give it to people again, and then they're not buying our book. Okay, whatever, ridiculous, but especially with the, you know, yes, the voices have gotten better, but a lot of people just, they don't want to read a book audibly. I mean, I know Audible is getting really popular, but for the most part, people still want to read a book visually a lot of the time, or at least given the choice, they want to have that option. So... Both of those arguments are kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, and you could also say, well, okay, but electronically, couldn't I, if I really, really wanted to, couldn't I take a screenshot or, you know, do what I'm doing here? I didn't do the whole book, but I just did a quick little snippet of a few pages. Somebody could record a video and post a video and just have people watch the video, pause it during, you know, just, you know, show each page for a couple of, you know, five seconds and then flip to the next page. You know, the person could really open the video, play it, you know, hit pause on every page and until they finish reading and then just keep going. So technically you could do that visually, but yet people are allowed to download the book and read the, read the books with their eyes so why shouldn't we have the same right to download and read a book with our ears, you know? Um, it's just as easy to, to copy and replicate it now audibly as it is visually, or vice versa. So to me, none of those arguments hold water anymore. Um, and then the other part of it that just baffles me Reach for the stars is... Look, look. Okay, hush, there we go. The other part that baffles me about this whole thing is, so in a lot of cases, uh, you know, s there are sites like Learning Ally and Bookshare, and you can get some of the books electronically via those means, and if, if we can, that's great. But a lot of times you can't. So in that case, you have a couple of options. You can physically buy the physical book, scan it with a program like Open Book, Kurzweil, or DocuScan, something like that, and then just, like I said, manually scan every page, or buy a scanner with a document feeder, rip the book binding off, which kind of gets rid of any trade-in value that you, would, that you would have if you wanted to sell back your used book, but you could scan it yourself. Or you could... talk to the publisher or have the disability services office talk to the publisher and see if they would give you an electronic copy in an accessible format because you are unable to read the print format. So here's what's weird about this whole thing. So, and this is totally possible to do. Um, what can happen is, so the way that the, the textbook companies, the way these publishers want you to do it is okay, you can't read our textbook, um, and we have a Kindle version out there, but it isn't accessible, so meh, you can't use that. You can't just buy that Kindle, out, Kindle book outright and then be happy and use it like everybody else. So instead, they want you to buy the print copy of the textbook, which a lot of people aren't 
e able to read in the first place. Then you provide proof to the publisher, you know, give them a receipt, a copy of the receipt or whatever, prove to them that you have purchased the physical copy of the textbook. And then they will send you a copy in electronic format, usually PDF, uh, usually in PDF format, um, which <laughs> sometimes that's a whole other topic, but that may or may not be really accessible. Um, some books, some PDF books have actually come electronically and they've come in as images. So yes, it's an electronic PDF version of the textbook, but the pages themselves are just pictures of the pages. They're not OCR'd or they're not straight up text. So basically out of the box, that file is not accessible either. So then the student has to hope that either themselves or Disability Services has an OCR program like OpenBook, Kurzweil, or DocuScan, or OmniPage, or whatever, and then they can extract the book, or the, the text out of that book, and save it into an accessible format, either, you know, usually they'll save it as a Word document or something like that. So all this nonsense, you know, that takes time out of the student's time, the disability services time, the publisher's time, making sure that they have the file, and then if the, you know, maybe the PDF file is does have text in it so it can be read, um, you know, but some people still have trouble, you know, just getting around the PDF files in that format and don't really like it as much as, say, something like RTF or Word, but it's just really a lot clunkier than it has to be. So, now you, let's say, okay, you go through that, you buy the print book, you provide proof to the publisher, you get their ebook. So now, what's to stop you? You've provided proof of purchase. You haven't unwrapped the book yet. You know, usually it comes with like a, you know, plastic wrap around them or whatever, a lot of them. So the book looks brand new. You've provided the proof to the publisher. You know, what's to stop you within, you know, usually this process takes a day or two, a couple days or so. What's to, st to stop you as the student saying, okay, I've got my electronic version. I don't have any use for this paper version. I'm just going to return this to the bookstore full of, for a full refund, which they totally could do. Um, so now the student has an accessible form of the textbook, but the publisher hasn't received zip. They, in fact, got no money because they got a full refund because they hadn't unwrapped the book. Um, so the publisher, publisher actually saw no money out of that, and I guarantee you a lot of people do that. And, you know, to kind of spite these publishers that just won't make their stuff accessible, you know what? I don't blame them. Um, I don't blame them for doing that, really. So <laughs> you're basically saying that with technology like iBooks and Kindle and all these other mainstream sources... The technology is already there through, through features like voiceover and talkback and whatever else. Reach for the stuff. All that technology is there. You really don't have to do a whole heck of a lot to your Kindle book or your iBook or whatever it happens to be. Maybe make sure that your images are labeled and if you have diagrams you could go above and beyond and really you know make those work well. But as far as even the text itself goes, as long as it's text, the features are already there. You don't have to do anything. So instead of the publishers just, in it, you know, keeping the text-to-speech enabled, and then the blind or visually impaired student could just go buy your book directly through the Kindle store or the iBook store, whatever, you get full price for the book. I get my accessible ebook. We're both happy. So instead of doing this and allowing this text to speech, instead what you're telling me is you would rather waste my time, waste disability services time, and waste your own time pooling together, trying to make sure that, okay, this book has been paid for and then finding some weird accessible version that might be laying around somewhere on some computer, getting it to the person, only to have the student 
sell back your actual book that they paid for, so then you get nothing out of it. Um, so you would rather have that scenario than just allowing the text-to-speech to be there. You get paid, I get my book, life is good. That's, I think, my strongest argument. I mean, it, it just really makes no sense to me. It, yeah, it just makes no sense to me. So, um, that, I think, will really about wrap up this video. I really just wanted to do this because, like I said, this has been an issue for as basically as long as ebooks have been available. Um, you know, originally we had this problem with all, pretty much all mainstream ebooks because, you know, if they, if they were just regular novels or, you know, entertainment or leisure reading, recreational reading, we even had problems with those. Well, we've gotten past that for the most part. Um, we're good there. Now we just have to get the textbook publishers to follow suit and, um, you know, allow the accessibility features that are built into these devices and apps to work, and life will be good. So, I I wanted to talk about that particular issue, and I would I would highly encourage you to, con you know, if you are going to school, if you have if you're in any of these scenarios where Bookshare or Learning Alley does not have your textbook and you have to work with the publisher to get an electronic one, maybe you go look and you find there is a Kindle book available, please, I encourage you to write the publisher or, you know, make some noise about it and, you know, let them know that, hey, you know, you have this potentially accessible book available, don't block these features. I mean, it's going to take a lot of us to actually contact these people for them to finally listen. Um... I don't know what it's going to take, but it, you know, like I said, it's a it's a really kind of annoying issue that could easily be fixed. So, you know, if you're in that situation, if you're in class, you have, you know, you run into any of these situations, please contact the developers. Let them know that you know this really has got to stop, and please make their stuff accessible. Unblock the text to speech features in your Kindle or iBook or whatever app it happens to be. You know, maybe even point out some examples. You know, reference um, this uh, Reach for the Stars book or re reference a book that you've used that does work really well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just really encourage you guys to do that. So, yeah, I mean, the reason I wanted to do this video is partly to just talk about this whole topic in general. And especially after I got that tweet talking about this Reach for the Stars book. I checked it out for free, and I thought, you know what? This is really very good. Um, this just goes to prove that a book, you know, a, a really interactive and uh, good version of an ebook can be, you know, graphically, graphically complex or include a lot of different things in it and still be accessible. So wanted to show you a little bit of that as well. So I hope you guys found this video helpful, useful, entertaining, whatever. Um, like I said, definitely encourage you to guys to talk to these publishers and uh, hopefully we'll get this problem fixed sooner rather than later. Otherwise, uh, yeah, that'll wrap it up for this one and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, please uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, like the videos, whatever. And uh, until next time, I will talk to you guys again later.